Hi, everybody. A very good afternoon. Thank you all for finding time and joining this today's webinar. A very warm welcome to all you speakers and participants in our webinar today. She helps her thrive. My name is Dr. Priyanka Kocher, your host for today. I'm a senior program officer at Engender Health and passionate about implementing evidence-based and sustainable health programs, especially for adolescents and young people. For decades, Engender Health has had a youth-centric approach to its programs and has believed in meaningfully engaging them in interventions for their own health. At Engender Health, we believe that young people are experts in their own health and rights and hold the power to develop comprehensive and successful solutions for their own health-related challenges or their communities. The webinar captures some of our learnings from a similar two-month initiative in Sitamari district of Bihar to improve the survival of newborn girls by meaningfully engaging adolescent girl champions. In this webinar, we'll hear from all our speakers, our panelists about why they think this is a promising approach. We'll also hear from the AGCs themselves, the champions themselves, their experience of engaging in this initiative. Just for just a brief head up, a heads up, all microphones and cameras are disabled for participants. However, you can type your questions in the QA section. And as we move along, uh, we'll try to address your questions. I now invite Dr. Ajay Khera, country representative in gender health for a brief introduction of the project. As we all know, before joining in gender health, Dr. Ajay Khera has served in the capacity of commissioner for government of India's RM and CHA program for more than 10 years. He's a well-recognized consensus builder and a person of great repute in advancing the maternal child health and adolescent health initiatives in India. And gender health is really honored to grow under your leadership, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Priyanka, for this nice introduction. So first of all, on behalf of Engender Health, I shall like to extend the warm welcome to all the participants of this webinar that is titled, She Helps Her Thrive. And at the outset, I would also like to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Luigi from UNICEF, Anand Sina from Packard Foundation, and Dr. Zoya from the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare as the head of the adolescent program of Government of India for joining with us as speaker and guest on this important occasion. You know, during this particular workshop, we propose to share the learning from an initiative where we tried to meaningfully engage adolescent girls as champions in addressing the survival of the newborn girl child. And as you're all aware that engender health's vision is a gender equal world. And we continue to identify, continue to address gender barriers in the community, you know, wherever we work. You know, we, you also must be aware that we are working in Sita Mari district of Bihar with the support of Packet Foundation, where we are providing technical assistance in implementation of the government of India's RKSK program, that is the adolescent program, with a special emphasis on peer educator program. And we find that peer educators have a lot of potential. They are not only as a recipient of the services or as a client, they can also act as the big resource in the community. And we also aware that government of India has a lot of commitment in terms of ending you know, child mortality. Preventable deaths of children are to be avoided. And this is not only the commitment of government of India, even the SDGs commitment of ending newborn deaths, ending preventable newborn deaths and even the ambitious targets have been kept. And, you know, while working in the district of Sita Mari, you know, we noticed that there is a significant gender differential in the child mortality in the state of Bihar. You know, the male infant mortality in the state of Bihar is 30, and the female infant mortality in the state of Bihar is 35. 
you know, there is a significant difference in the gender, I mean, the newborn survival. And to my mind, you know, gender is an important determinant and we must address and we must need to address these gender differentials. That's why, you know, what we did was with the support of UNICEF, you know, we identified the existing adolescent peer educators or adolescent girls as the champions. And then we oriented them in conveying simple newborn messages to the families where girl child is born. And we took the support and the guidance of the ASHA worker as well, because ASHA worker is mandated to make, you know, visit to every child, every newborn. There are six visits are mandated. But looking at this gender, you know, differential in newborn mortality, so, you know, we added the element of, you know, we try to engage, meaningfully try to engage adolescent girls as champion in terms of conveying simple newborn messages. And during this, you know, two months initiative, we oriented around 1,005 adolescent girl champions and 531 newborn girl families in eight blocks of Sitamari, they were visited and the newborn messages were conveyed along with the handouts. And we also engaged with the local leaders. We also engaged with the parents and we took care of this basic principle of, you know, no harm framework, you know, which is very critical. Whenever you want to do any activity in the community, no harm framework was put into action. So as to avoid, you know, any kind of a backlash from the community. And, you know, if you look at the results are so encouraging and satisfying, that we find that the adolescents have the potential to be a real change agent in the community for any for addressing any problem in the community any public health issue in the community so they can be true change agent and we also interviewed around 405 adolescent girl champions and we recorded their you know observations and they interestingly we find that 90% felt very confident in conveying the newborn messages. And even the same number around 89, 90% also felt that their own knowledge has also improved, which will have a long-term impact in their own health and the well-being of their own and their communities. And they also indicated they have under, understood the gender barriers in the community and encouraged people not to do a kind of a discrimination between a male and a female child. You know, this is a real example of a community taking the ownership in addressing those gender barriers, the gender differentials. Therefore, you know, it, it appears that adolescents have the real potential to take leadership role in the community. So with these few words, I stop here. And now I will request Priyanka, if you can, you know, show that film, you know, which we have or captured, which captures the journey of this complete initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We'd just like to uh, show you a small video uh, of the work that we did in Sitamari. Thank you. Deep in the rural heartland of North India, a group of young girls have been bringing in a unique initiative. Engender Health, with the support of UNICEF, implemented the Adolescent Girl Champions Initiative. To understand how adolescent girls in the Sita Marhi district of Bihar can be involved in supporting families for the survival and health of newborn girls. The infant mortality rate in Bihar is 32 per 1,000 live births. Gender differentials are also significant. The first month of a child's life is most crucial, with more than two-thirds of the deaths occurring during this period. Several social factors lead to neglect of health of newborn girls, 
and the resultant delay in recognizing signs and symptoms of illnesses and seeking treatment. Most of these deaths are preventable. Engender Health's initiative focused on survival of newborn girls in eight blocks of Sitamari district through the engagement of adolescent girl peer educators as champions to enable and equip families for healthy growth and development of newborn girls. It intended to work towards improved newborn care practices and knowledge in the community with a special emphasis on girl-child to address gender differential in newborn care, improved knowledge of essential newborn care among adolescent girl champions, improved understanding among adolescent girl champions of gender barriers that impact the care of newborn girls. The initiative utilized the gains made as part of the Tarunya project in the district and built capacities of the project's adolescent peer educators to engage them meaningfully as champions in the selected blocks. The adolescent girl champions were selected and trained in careful consultation with key stakeholders in the village including mentors and frontline functionaries such as ASHAs. They supplemented the efforts of ASHA workers who are mandated to conduct home visits to all households with newborns. The project was continuously monitored through mentors and field staff of Engender Health. मैं पहले पीयर एजुकेटर थी उसके बाद मैं किशोरी चैंपियन के रूप में चयनित की गई और मुझे एक दिन का ट्रेनिंग मिला गया मुझे फिर ट्रेनिंग में छह विषय के बारे में बताया गया जिसको मैं फिर होम विजिट करके और मां और उनके परिवारों को भी बता रही हूं इंप्लीमेंटेड ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ 2 मंथ्स द इनिशिएटिव हैज हेल्प्ड क्रिएट अ गर्ल चाइल्ड फ्रेंडली इंफॉर्म्ड इन्वॉल्वड एंड जेंडर इक्विटेबल एनवायरनमेंट for the healthy survival of newborn girls at the center of this change stands a girl herself as the confident adolescent girl champion jab se ye bachchi log aayi hain isme na to bahut acha ye log kaam kar rahi hain hum log ko liye hum log ke hit mein bahut acha kaam lekin hum dono mil kar ke samjhate hain bahut acha dhang sab samajh li hai ai ladki jaati hai na humse zyada hi samjha leti hai रूपा नाम की लड़की आई थी तो मेरे मेरे बोले कि इसे अच्छा से रखने के लिए गीले कपड़े में उसे नहीं रखने के लिए गर्म कपड़े में रखने के लिए छाती से उसे चिपका के रखने के लिए उस इसे साबुन लाइटिंग वाइटिंग करे तो उसे साबुन से हाथ धो के रखना चाहिए उसे वैसे नहीं रखना चाहिए म्यूजिक एकोज गुड म्यूजिक एकोज फर्दर ब्लॉक बाई ब्लॉक डिस्ट्रिक्ट बाई डिस्ट्रिक्ट वर्ल्ड बाई वर्ल्ड The song of success scripted by Engender Health's adolescent girl champions promises a symphony of healthy living for many more newborn girls as new frontiers new hopes beckon. thank you thank you everyone and uh, for those uh, for uh, for those who were not able to see the video clearly we'll be posting the link of the video it's on the engender health website and thank you dr khera for setting the context of this interesting conversation and giving a glimpse of this unique initiative my next speaker is a young person herself a leader a thought provoker and a strong advocate for meaningfully engaging with adolescents and youth across the program structures processes Anna Aguilera she leads Engender Health's adolescent and young people's global portfolio and supports the integration of gender youth and social inclusion into everything that Engender Health does I welcome Anna to share her experience of working with young people globally and engaging them meaningfully welcome Anna over to you thank you thank you Priyanka welcome to everyone who is joining us from all around the world especially in India My name is Anna and I work at Engender Health as Priyanka has said. I work across our teams, our countries, our programs to do two things. The first is to better reach adolescents and youth with sexual and reproductive health high quality programs. And the second and I think most important is to better work with adolescents and youth across what we do, whether it's our programs, our processes, our structures, to elevate their voices their participation and their leadership 
with a special emphasis on the participation and leadership of adolescent girls and young women. I remember when I was an adolescent myself, um, when I was working on different youth leadership programs, you know, I was always, I remember being told that I had to be extra careful. And there were certain things that I couldn't do that some of the boys that I worked with could do, like staying past dark or maybe doing things that seemed a bit improper for girls to do. And it's lived experiences like mine that are the basis for why we at Engender Health focus on this integration of a gender, youth, and social inclusion lens, because we want to really identify, challenge, and ultimately change the underlying gender, age, and related biases, prejudices, and stereotypes that really hold adolescents and girls back, adolescents and youth in general, but especially adolescent girls and young women. So here at Engender Health, we work on a wide range of sexual and reproductive health programs. And just a few examples. In West Africa, we work with youth bloggers, with activists, with young feminists to elevate their voices and disseminate high quality youth friendly information about their sexual and reproductive rights and specifically increasing access to comprehensive abortion care. In Ethiopia, we work with in and out of school adolescents and youth to deliver gender transformative and youth transformative comprehensive sexuality education so that young people are informed and have the ability to make decisions about their sexual and reproductive health. And in Tanzania, we engage youth-led formal and informal networks to tackle gender-based violence by addressing those root causes and supporting young people in building their soft skills and their hard skills to pursue educational and economic opportunities. So this project here in Bihar, the Adolescent Girl Champion Project, has really demonstrated the potential and the power of adolescent girls. And by moving past seeing adolescent girls as beneficiaries or targets of programs and really seeing them as agents of change, as Dr. Kara has mentioned, agents of change for themselves, for their peers, for their families, for their communities, um, and strengthening the current and future potential of our communities. Often we hear that young people are the leaders of tomorrow, when the reality is that with the right support and an enabling environment, young people are the leaders of today and tomorrow. And if we fundamentally believe that adolescents and youth are experts in their own lives, then it's our job to do everything we can to shift those inequitable power structures that we know are in place. And these structures show up within our own nonprofits, within our donor institutions, within our government structures, and they undermine the voice, the agency, and most importantly, the power of adolescent girls, young women, and adolescents and youth more generally. So this project is really a first step towards that direction, and I'm really thrilled that everyone is joining us today can learn more about it. And thank you for your time, and I'll pass it back to Priyanka. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much for uh underlining what you, we were just discussing, that there's a need to believe in the power of adolescents and you, and how adolescents can be champions and change makers for their own families, their peers, their communities, everybody. Thank you, Anna. And I now welcome our next speak, speaker um, who needs no introduction, but still uh, Mr. Luigi, who is the, Mr. Luigi, who is the Chief of Health, UNICEF India. Luigi has worked for 20 years in the international development sector, contributing to design, implementation, monitoring, evaluation of health policies and programs in many countries in Africa and Asia. Today, Mr. Luigi would be highlighting a very interesting approach of reducing gender disparities in the community through engagement of adolescents, especially for newborn girls and young children. Over to you, Luigi. Welcome. Good afternoon. Thanks a lot, Priyanka, for this introduction. I'm not sure about your statement about not needing introductions. But anyway, thanks a lot for that. Um, and, and on behalf of uh, UNICEF, of our entire team at UNICEF, uh, we really wish to welcome uh, everyone here and to congratulate um, every, everyone at Engender Health for embarking in this initiative. And also to express um, a word of thanks to Dr. Zoya on behalf of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for being here, I, we know how much Dr. Zoya is a, an engine, a powerful engine of change. 
And so I hope that by listening to the learnings that we will go through today, some ideas will come that the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare can take forward. Um, I just want to share a few words. <clears throat> of course, in, um, in a previous life where there was no COVID and Dr. Kera was in another capacity, I learned, and today I had the confirmation that coming on any panel after Dr. Kara means that the job has, is done already and nothing has been left to say. Uh, so um, uh, with the opening from Dr. Kara and also the very powerful images that uh, came through the video, which I hope we are allowed by Engender Health to upload on our website at UNICEF. Uh, but anyway, coming after this, and after Anna, I just want to bring a few thoughts. I will start um, from uh, three points about a concept where I really see value here, uh, that is rights, human rights and child rights in particular. And here, I think um, this initiative is talking to three fundamental rights of, of uh, the Child Rights Convention. One is the right to life. Uh, which every boy and girl has invariably, uh, even before conception, and therefore any action that can be done to protect it is speaking to a, a universal right. The second is right to health and health care. And we know from data that uh, health care has biases in some regions of India when it comes to access to it or referral to it uh, due to gender uh, reasons. And the third, which is maybe a less known right of every child, and let me remind everyone that by child, universally, we talk of anyone below the age of 18, is the right to participation. So children have the right to be heard and to participate. And again, this initiative gives the possibility to the adolescents to participate to social life and to social improvements. And therefore, um, three very important points in terms of looking at this initiative from a rights-based perspective. Um, mirroring this, another three points, looking at this initiative from an equity-based perspective. Here we're talking of Bihar. If we match the ratios of mortality with the population of Bihar, it's clear that the toll of uh, a newborn and infant mortality in the state is one of the highest in India and probably is a good pie of the entire mortality for newborns at least across the globe. So at Zoom in a very difficult state which is uh, striving and trying to improve is a very much uh, welcome initiative in terms of equity. The other is on girls. Uh, we know that uh, newborn girls have, biologically speaking, um, a higher chance of survival than boys. Uh, so not only they are, uh, girls are smarter than us across the board, but they also biologically, they uh, have this, and this is proven globally by numbers, by statistics. And yet, as we go through the life course or from newborn to post um, neonatal, um, a life of, of, of boys and girls, we see that in India and in BR in particular, the ratio that one would expect as per global statistics is magically or dramatically inverted. And that doesn't speak to a different biology. It speaks to communities, to behaviors, to beliefs, and to culture. And who better than the youngsters, and in this case, the adolescent girls, uh, can be an agent of change. The third is the adolescent girls themselves. Uh, if we invest in these girls, and I've seen some on screen, I look forward to hear from them. Um, we do three things, two or three very important things. We change immediate outcomes in the community. We educate um, the mothers of the future, and we probably guarantee a better survival for the children of the future. And that's not my opinion, that's the Lancet. So. Um, a third point that I would like to uh, highlight and the last about what excites us about uh, this initiative is more around the approach that has been taken. And again, three considerations here. One is uh, an approach that clearly looks at primary health care 
And COVID-19 has clearly taught us how much primary health care is fundamental. And there are a couple of usual um, misses in our approach to primary health care. Uh, we all talk primary health care, but doing it in a proper way means also a few things that we not always realize or not always do. One is fully engaged communities in uh, delivering and then uh, making judgments or assessment, uh, evaluating the care that they receive. And, and there is nothing better than an involvement of the adolescents here. The second um, point is of PHC uh, that again, uh, here we're looking at is uh, care is not only about care, it's also about prevention. And here we are really looking at this aspect of early detection, prevention, to avoid the issues before it's too late. The nice, other nice thing about the approach is innovation. Uh, I think uh, often we think of innovation in terms of uh, the newest app or the newest tool or the newest gadget. There is also social innovation, uh, uh, which is about how differently you can do things uh, with the same ingredient, cook a different recipe and make it um, a nicer, um, uh, which, uh, which I think this speaks about small scale, two months by all means, we're still in breastfeeding stage, uh, very early stages, but it means trying to use the power that we have within the community for better outcomes. And the very last point, and I'll stop it here, uh, this year, uh, 2021 is the year of declared globally by WHO as the year of the healthcare workers. And I always like to think uh, being in this very awkward position of being the chief of health in a global organization, but not a medical doctor, um, that healthcare workers are heroes in all what they do, particularly in low and middle income countries. And if we look at what healthcare workers did last year, then I think they became superheroes, uh, not only heroes, for all what they've gone through. Um, and in that, uh, looking at the video, when I see we all talk about task shifting and moving, uh, reducing the burden and the pressure on the health workforce, when I see these young girls relieving, releasing some pressure from the ashes who have thousands of other life-saving things to do. Um, I think we are also giving an, a wonderful additional weapon to bring about education in community, but also to support uh, the frontline workers in doing a bit more and a bit more efficiently by tapping into the power and the strength that they have uh, there in their communities through young people that can be easily educated. Of course, they cannot do everything, but they can be an extra voice adding uh, to, 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 to the game of uh, behavior change, health promotion, and, 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 um, and similar activities. So I'll close it here just as a reminder. Um, there is a study out there um, which uh, through which someone has looked at, I think, 144 countries and, and looked at what have been in the past 20 years, the major determinants in these 140 plus countries of the reductions observed in child mortality and in maternal mortality. So this is global. And it will be of interest to you that only 20% of this reduction is attributed to changes within the health sector. Most of it comes by changes into education, gender, um, behavior, economic status, infrastructure, and the likes. Again and again, there is more that can be achieved out of just delivering clinical care, but reaching out to communities as agents of change. Thanks again, again for, um, from, for this that I would hope is just a start of a longer journey in terms of scale and duration. And I look forward to the rest of the deliberations. Uh, thanks to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Luigi. Uh, that was inspiring. And uh, 
and uh, thank you for highlighting uh, very very important points here the right to participate uh, by the adolescents and talking about you know uh, young people as agents of change and uh, for the better survival and engaging fully uh, with all the communities which is actually now the key to if we are actually wanting to make a change in um, the determine the health determinants uh, for a while and i think one very important point that you actually talked about uh, in your concluding remarks that you know only 20% of it is coming from within the system and and uh, how uh, useful or how uh, you know this approach of engaging young people can be an interesting approach and and yeah yes thank you thank you luigi and now uh, this is a time let us uh, meet our real life champions who have made this all possible for me personally every time i meet these champions i'm so inspired that it makes me believe in their power even more so we uh, have structured this session as a qa session so that we are able to bring to you uh, the experience of these agcs in the limited time that we have and our agcs will be talking in hindi and i'll try my best to translate in english uh, pardon me uh, if i miss out something please do uh, 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 point out in the chat that, that you know this point got missed which was very important so let me welcome our uh, champions uh so here they are welcome muskan rupa alka uh itne sare log aap se jude hain aap se aapko sunne ke liye aaj uh kya aap sabko apna parichay dena chahenge yes ma'am yes please muskan good evening ma'am my name is kan pia of peer educator acs sales and age 17 district sitamarhi bihar thank you थैंक यू एंड अलका थैंक यू थैंक यू अब मैं मेरा पहला प्रश्न so i'll be posting the questions in the qa uh, chat box so that you are able to read what i'm asking them so mera pehla prashn aap logo se hoga koi bhi jawab de aap is pehel agc ke roop mein aap kaise shamil hue koi koi bhi jawab de muskan rupa alka koi bhi so i'm asking like how did you uh, join this initiative yes ma'am yes ma'am main pehle peer educator thi उसके बाद में मतलब जो हमारे सीनियर्स हैं और जितने भी इसके मतलब जो कार्य जो कार्य करते हैं तो उसने मतलब सोचे होंगे कि कहीं ना कहीं ये जानकारी जो है नवजात शिशु को कैसे देख रेख करना चाहिए ये जानकारी क्यों ना हम किशोरियों को दो दे कि ये जानकारी उनके लिए भविष्य में भी अच्छा होगा और प्रेजेंट में भी अच्छा होगा इसीलिए हम लोगों को एक दिवसीय ट्रेनिंग दे करके इसमें शामिल किया गया और हम लोग इसमें शामिल होकर बहुत खुश हुए हैं ओके थैंक यू मुस्कान मैं इकट्ठा ट्रांसलेट कर दूंगी बाद में मुस्कान अलका आप कुछ ऐड करना चाहेंगे यस मैम और इससे पहले जैसे आरकेएस के प्रोग्राम से हम लोग एक पीयर एजुकेटर है तो वहां हम लोग अपने एज के लोगों को बताते हैं और यहां हम लोगों का एक ऐसा प्लेटफार्म मिला जहां हम अपने से बड़े एज के लोगों को बता सकते हैं और एक लड़की होने के नाते किसी लड़की की लाइफ को बचाना हमारे लिए बहुत बड़ी अपॉर्चुनिटी और इसमें हम लोग अच्छे से अच्छे तरीके से करेंगे ताकि किसी लड़की की लाइफ को बचाया जा सके अगर हर लड़की बचेगी तो इसमें हम भी एक लड़की हैं और वो हमारे लिए भी बेनिफिशियल होगा थैंक यू अलका कुछ जोड़ना चाहेंगे यस मैम बोलो बोलो मैम के माध्यम से मालूम हुआ कि एक मतलब नवजात शिशु को बचाने के लिए एक प्रशिक्षण होने वाली है वो प्रशिक्षण के संबंध में जानकारी जानकारी के लिए प्रशिक्षण होने वाली है 
उस प्रशिक्षण के होने के बाद हम लोगों को अपने समुदाय में जाकर इस जानकारी को पहुंचाना है और और नवजात शिशु को कैसे सुरक्षित रखना है इसके बारे में प्रशिक्षण में बताया जाएगा अगर हम अपने समुदाय में अपने शिशु को अपने मतलब जात शिशु को बचाने के लिए ऐसे प्रशिक्षण में क्यों नहीं भाग लेंगे जरूर लेते हैं so just to translate um, rupa says that she was previously a peer educator where she came to know about this initiative that is being taken up and this is how she got to know and uh, alka adds that um, uh, uh, when she got to know about this initiative she was like if i am getting a chance to affect newborn lives uh, why wouldn't i participate and muskan makes a very interesting point she says that i am a girl here and i am getting an opportunity to save a girl and if she is getting this opportunity uh, you know if if a girl is coming forward to help a girl uh, this is going to be like a, a what do you say benefit for a for the broader community so this is how uh, she thinks that you know it has been beneficial for her to join this initiative mera agla sawal aap logo se hoga ki agc ke roop mein aapne apne anubhav mein kuch kuch naya sikha is dauran agc banne ke baad बनने के बाद हम लोगों ने अपनी अनुभव से बहुत कुछ सीखा एक तो न्यू बॉर्न बेबी केयर के बारे में किस तरीके से बच्चों का केयर करना फिर हमारे समाज में सबसे बड़ा जो भ्रांति होता है कि लड़के लड़की में जो डिफरेंस कर दिया जाता है कि तो लड़का होता है तो वो चीज मतलब शुरू से लास्ट तक लड़कियों के साथ होता है अगर कोई औरत जैसे प्रेगनेंट रहती है तो वहां पर उसके अंदर ये एक्साइटमेंट रहता है कि वो अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी करवाती है अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी होता है जो की बच्चे की सिचुएशन को देखने के लिए बट लोग यहाँ जेंडर चेक करने के लिए अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी करवाते हैं और अगर लड़की हुई तो उसे वोशन करवा देते हैं बट अगर अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी में नहीं भी पता चला तो लड़की के केयर में भी डिफरेंस करते हैं फिर उसके बाद उसकी एजुकेशन होती है तो लड़का है तो उसको बहुत अच्छा हायर एजुकेशन देने के बारे में सोचते हैं फिर मैरिजोल एज में जाने के बाद फिर लड़का है तो वो जॉब करेगा उसके बाद उसकी शादी और अगर लड़की है तो उसकी शादी कर देना है ऐसा सब हमेशा लड़कियों के साथ होता है और घर में भी ये हमेशा बोला जाता है कि लड़की हो तो लड़की की तरह हो ऐसा सब कुछ लड़कियों को छीनना पड़ता है okay let me translate before i forget everything so uh, muskan says that uh, one thing that she learned after joining this initiative was uh, definitely about uh, newborn care and uh, also uh, uh, what um, uh, muskan says is that uh, this gave actually uh, she always knew that but then kind of it reiterated the gender disparities that exist even you know like a like when a woman is pregnant so many people go for abortion because uh, just to uh, because uh, you know we all know about sex discrimination in our in our society and then there is discrimination at all levels whether it's education nutrition so even when a uh, when a boy turns uh, 20 there's still a scope for him to go and work and do stuff which uh, which he wants but then for a girl the only solution that she thinks in her community is uh, marriage uh, so um, uh, then um, uh, yes Re, uh, rupa aap kuch aur add karenge yes ma'am jaise hamare samaj mein ye bhi dekha jata hai ki jaise hum ladki hai to jaise bahar nahi padhne diya jata hai jaise ladki hai to tum ghar mein khana bana banao bas bahut ho gaya bahar to ekdam matlab nahi jaane diya jata hai jaise ladka hai to bahar padhega आइए सो ऑफिसर बनेगा लेकिन लड़की है अरे तुम पढ़ के क्या करोगी खाना वाना बनाना है बस ये हो गया और सबसे बड़ी भेद भाव तो ये देखा जाता है मैम कि जैसे जब लड़की गर्भ अवस्था में रहती है गर्भवती जो महिलाएं होती हैं तो उनको तो सबसे बड़ी बाधा ये होता है कि पौष्टिक आहार भी नहीं दिया जाता है अच्छे से जैसे लड़कों को पौष्टिक आहार जरूरी नहीं है उतना फिर भी दिया जाएगा लेकिन यहाँ ये नहीं देखा जाता है कि जैसे हमारी बहू या हमारी बच्ची जो है वह गर्भ अवस्था में है उन्हें पौष्टिक आहार की जरूरत है लेकिन यहाँ तो ये भी मतलब नहीं कर पाते हैं जैसे लड़की है तो सूखा सूखा कुछ भी खा ले गर्भ अवस्था में भी जबकि न्यूट्रिशन सबसे जरूरी चीज होती है गर्भ अवस्था में ताकि हमारे बच्चे आगे भी स्वस्थ रहे और जो भी शिक्षा का या जो भी कैरियर हो अच्छे मतलब बच्चे हो तो ये कमी न्यूट्रिशन में भी ज्यादातर देखा जाता है हमारे समाज में यस थैंक यू मैम एक पॉइंट और ये भी देखा जाता है कि जैसे हम लड़की हैं तो खुलकर अभी भी लड़की समाज में बात नहीं करती है जैसे अपने माँ से भी खुलकर सारी बात नहीं कर पाती है अभी ऐसा मतलब ये चल रहा है लड़कियों के प्रति या लड़का है तो उसको बस फूली मतलब पैसा दिया जाता है हर सुविधा दिया जाता है गाड़ी दिया जाता है लेकिन लड़की को क्या जैसे घर में कैब रहना है बस हो गया 
और दूसरा तो बाल विवाह होता है बाल विवाह कर दिया और तुरंत बच्चे हो जाते हैं तो इसका भविष्य में बहुत थोड़ा सा गलत ये आता है इधर तो ये सब नहीं होना चाहिए मैम ये हमारे समाज में एक बहुत बड़ी बड़ा है तो हम चाहेंगे कि इसको दूर करेंगे और दूर तभी होगा जब हम सब हम सब गर्ल्स एक होंगे तभी ये समस्या का हल हो पाएगा अन्यथा नहीं हो पाएगा हमारे गवर्नमेंट ने भी कानून बना रखा है लेकिन कोई मानने के लिए तैयार नहीं है तो हम लड़कियों को सजग रहना होगा तभी ये इसका हल हो पाएगा मैम थैंक यू रूपा सो रूपा सेज अगेन आई एग्री आई आई रियली कैनॉट एक्चुअली ट्रांसलेट दूसियाजम विद विच ही टॉक्स बट आई स्टिल ट्राई रूपा सेज दैट अगेन दीज डिस्पैरिटीज दे एग्जिस्ट एट ऑल लेवल वेदर इट्स न्यूट्रिशन और वेदर इट्स एजुकेशन इवन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ इट्स प्रेगनेंट वुमेन एंड वी ऑल नो दैट शी नीड्स एडिशनल केयर एडिशनल सपोर्ट Uh, but that still doesn't happen at the community it's uh, it's uh, we all know that the biases are so uh, prominent in the community and then she um, uh, says that the solution to address all this is that you know if uh, as women or as girls we come together and talk about this as a you know as as one body as as one people so uh, there are laws uh, child marriages happen uh, and uh, so there are laws but then uh, as my agc says that they really uh, aren't for, uh, as effective as they should be um alka kuch aur ab add karna chahenge ji ma'am question is ma'am ji alka question ka repeat thoda ha main yahi puchna cha rahi thi aapse jo hum log abhi baat kar rahe the aapne naya kya seekha agc ban ke और एक एक एंड आई जस्ट अलका एक सेकंड एंड आई थिंक आई मिस्ड वन पॉइंट फ्रॉम मुस्कान दैट शी हाइलाइटेड दैट इनिशियली व्हेन शी वाज अ पीयर एजुकेटर व्हाट शी वाज डूइंग वाज टॉकिंग टू यंग पीपल ऑफ हर ओन एज बिकॉज एज अ पीयर एजुकेटर यू आर सपोज्ड टू मेक ग्रुप्स एंड टॉक टू अदर एडलेसेंस बट विद दिस इनिशिएटिव व्हाट शी डिड वाज टू गो आउट इन द कम्युनिटी टॉक टू पीपल हु आर एडल्ट्स हु we know how you know in india its age does matter so this actually gave her opportunity to do this ji alka sorry maine aapko interrupt kiya kuch aur add karenge aap ji 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 main main to aise bahut jaan seekha lekin do jaan talking hai yahan pe bata do kyunki samay bhi yahan pe bahut kam hai na main to apne wo navjat pehle to navjat shishu ko kaise surakshit rakha jaye iske bare mein achhi tarah se jankari उसके बाद अपने समुदाय तक मतलब जाकर उनके व्यवहार को उनको जानकारी को समझी और अपने पूरे मतलब समुदाय में अपने से बड़ों के बीच अपने बातों को रखना ये बहुत मुमकिन है मैम राइट जी तो अलका भी कह रही है कि एक शी गॉट इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑन न्यू बॉर्न केयर देन शी गॉट द कॉन्फिडेंस टू टॉक टू एडल्ट्स इन हर ओन कम्युनिटी एंड यू नो बीइंग एबल टू कम्युनिकेट व्हाट शी हैज लर्न फॉर Uh, in in the training and there are a lot of interesting questions coming from the agcs i'm so excited uh, uh, so um, i'll just ask uh, one more question because uh, that question answers some of uh, the questions that you are asking uh, uh, muskan priya or uh, alka aap logo ke liye itne sawal aa rahe hain mere paas uh, log aap se itni baat karna cha rahe hain just take or question uh, uh, kuch kuch uh, logo ke answer usse ho jayenge uh, mera aap se prashna tha ki Uh, क्या आप ऐसे इनिशिएटिव्स में uh, ऐसे ऐसे प्रोजेक्ट्स में दोबारा जुड़ना चाहेंगे मैं इसलिए पूछ रही हूँ आपको स्कूल भी जाना है आप कोचिंग भी जा रहे हो आपको घर के काम भी करने हैं आपको लगता है कि ऐसे इनिशिएटिव्स में आपको जोड़ना चाहिए और क्या ये चीज uh, और uh, बच्चों लड़कों और लड़कियों दोनों को आप ये रिकमेंड करोगे और अगर करोगे तो हमारे जैसे लोग uh, जो इस पैनल पे बैठे हैं जो आपको सुन रहे हैं हम आपकी कैसे सहायता कर सकते हैं उसमें जुड़ना चाहेंगे क्योंकि अगर ये प्रोग्राम जितना आगे बढ़ेगा और ये बहुत बड़ा मैटर है जिसको मतलब संभालने में बहुत टाइम भी लग सकता है और अगर ये रेगुलर रहा तो ये पॉसिबल है और जैसे हम लड़कियों को ट्रेनिंग किया गया इसी तरीके से बॉयज फिर एजुकेटर को भी ट्रेनिंग किया जाना चाहिए क्योंकि किसी भी घर में इन सारी चीजों के पीछे एक लड़की का ही हाथ होता है और अगर कोई सारी बातों को समझेगा तो जैसे हम लोग बच्चे की माँ से जाकर बात कर उसी तरह से वो बच्चे के पापा से भी जाकर बात कर सकता है और उसको बता सकता है कि ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं करना चाहिए बॉयज गर्ल्स दो इक्वल अगर इक्वल उसको एजुकेशन दे इक्वल अगर उसका केयर करे तो फिर कुछ भी कम नहीं है और हर कुछ पॉसिबल है 
So Ms. Khan says that uh, initiatives like this uh, might take time to, uh, you know, show results, but then they are a good promising things. And she also highlights a very important point that boys, peer, like uh, peer educators or boys or adolescent boys or young boys should also be involved in initiatives like this because uh, they also have the potential to talk to a father or, uh, you know, uh, somebody else in the family uh, about these issues. Uh, anything, uh, Rupa or... आपको चैट करेंगे यस मैम जैसे मेरा कहना है कि जैसे हम इसमें दोबारा भी शामिल हो सकते हैं जैसे कि हमारे समुदाय में एक आंगनबाड़ी केंद्र होता है या कहीं कोई ऐसा जगह होनी चाहिए जहाँ पे दस दस पांच लोग बैठते हैं या बातचीत करते रहते हैं तो वहाँ पे ऐसे हम ज्यादातर करके आंगनबाड़ी केंद्र का बात करेंगे क्योंकि वहाँ एक सब सब जगह है अच्छी जगह होती है तो वहाँ पे हम चाहेंगे कि हमारे समाज के या हमारे जो मोहल्ले की जितने भी किशोरिया हैं जैसे हम किशोरी चैंपियन हैं तो हमें तो ये जानकारी पता है कि बच्चे को कैसे देख रेख करना है गर्ल को बचाना है ये चीजें मुझे पता है लेकिन हो सकता है कि जो लड़की जो किशोरिया नहीं पढ़, पढ़ने जाती है स्कूल अभी तक नहीं गई है किसी कारण तो हम चाहेंगे कि क्यों ना उसको भी इसमें शामिल करके उस आंगनबाड़ी केंद्र पर उनके जैसे पेरेंट्स वगैरह भी आ, मतलब आ जाएंगे और लड़की खुद भी आ जाएगी तो ये जानकारी उसे भी हो जाएगी जैसे वो स्कूल नहीं गए उसे किसी कोचिंग या किसी संस्थान उस चीज का जानकारी नहीं मिली तो हम चाहेंगे कि क्यों ना एक प्रोजेक्टर के माध्यम से या हमारे कुछ सीनियर्स हमारे सहायता करेंगे जैसे हमारे ए एन दीदी हो गई आशा कार्यकर्ता हो गई आंगनबाड़ी सेविका तो जैसे काउंसलर दीदी हो गई तो ये सब का सपोर्ट हम चाहेंगे और भी जो सीनियर्स लोग हैं उनका भी सपोर्ट हमें अगर मिलेगा तो ये भविष्य में कुछ आगे तक ये पहल चलेगी और कभी ना कभी एक न एक दिन ये जो गर्ल्स गर्ल्स वाली जो सिस्टम है वो खत्म हो जाएगी और भेदभाव भी खत्म हो जाएगा ऐसे जैसे हम कम्युनिटी या हमारे समाज के जो भी बच्ची है जो इस चीज की जानकारी अभी उसे नहीं पता है कि ये सब क्या होता है और जो लड़की पढ़ रही है उसको तो पता है ऑलरेडी कि ऐसा होता है फिर भी वो करते हैं लेकिन जब पेरेंट्स इस बात को सुनेंगे तो वो ज्यादातर एक्शन लेंगे क्योंकि मतलब जैसे भ्रूण हत्या ही करवाते हैं तो परिवार वालों को इसमें ज्यादा सपोर्ट होता है वही सिखाते हैं कि यार भाई मार दो बेटी को क्यों बेटी क्यों होगी लेकिन हम सब ये सोचते हैं कि अगर बेटी नहीं रहेगी तो फिर बेटा कहाँ से आएगा बेटा में तो बीमार नहीं हो सकता है तो क्यों ना हम इस चीज को बदल दे हम चाहेंगे एक जैसे जैसे संगठन के माध्यम से इसको और आगे तक पहुंचाए और सभी इसका लाभ उठाए थैंक यू रूपा थैंक यू रियली आई कैन नॉट हाँ जी रूपा बोले बोले आम सभा के तौर पे जैसे हमारे जो मुखिया होते हैं गांव का जैसे कुछ लोग जो होते हैं राजनीति के तौर पर तो उन लोग का बात का कुछ ज्यादा ये होता है ऐसे तो कानून भी बनाए गए हैं लेकिन उतना कौन समझता है अगर पेरेंट्स इस बात को सुनेंगे तो हमको लगता है कि एक्शन लेंगे थोड़ा सा कोशिश तो जरूर करेंगे एक्शन नहीं लेंगे कोशिश करेंगे थैंक यू रूपा तो अगेन मैं फिर कहूंगी आई एम रियली नॉट एबल टू ट्रांसलेट द एंथोसियाजम विद विच दीज गर्ल्स आर टॉकिंग बट वट रूपा से she starts by saying a very interesting point that uh, she goes to school she goes to coaching center then she still uh, you know from her uh, involvement in the school she gets to know some uh, you know have knowledge on some issues around maybe it's srh or maybe newborn care or you know issues that actually affect her daily life but then there are other girls in the community uh, who have never been to school who really do not get an opportunity uh, to go to school so uh, you know platforms should be created that uh, she gives some examples like anganwadi centers anms and people like counselors anganwadi centers or or pri members uh, of the community they should come together and you know uh, we should be able to create a group of uh, a group of girls young girls or women together who are able to actually talk about these things so so that the girl uh you know any and every girl in the community has this kind of uh, knowledge and she says that uh, it's it's very important and uh, she she is uh, aspirational of course uh, hopeful yes and but she is also practical when she says that uh, uh, she is uh, very aware that these things might not happen over a period of time and that this is going to take a time and uh, she reiterates that if uh, you know if the community has to keep on um, 
to flourish, uh, you know, a boy comes from a girl's a literal translation of what she says, then I think the girl has to, all women have, or other girls have to be given this, this kind of knowledge. Alka, you want to add something? Yes, yes, yes. If so uh, she says ki RK, because as you all know that under RKSK only two peer educators per village are selected and they uh, you know form groups with other adolescents in their community so she says that with this kind of knowledge she will be able to reach out uh, more uh, more uh, girls like her uh, so um, I think uh, how much time do we have uh, just uh, some some I found a very interesting question here which I think uh, should be taken uh, <laughs> uh, to the girls and uh, community senior older jo ladies thi, uh, ya mother in laws ya mothers thi unse resistance aaya resistance mane ki unse uh, like uh, aapko support mila ya aapko thoda sa dikkat hui shuru mein ji 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 rupa please ma'am pehle to hum jaise wahan visit karne gaye bachcho ko nazar se usko dekh dekh karne gaye to wahan to sabse pehle mahilaye jo thi ya bachche ki maa thi to sabse pehle ye prashn humse kiya ki isse is photo photo khichwane se ye sab samjhane se kya hoga she had uh, uh, she uh, started uh, giving these messages uh, there was some reluctance and the most important question asked was there uh, that what incentives i am going to get but eventually when they were able to talk to them with confidence people started listening to us and this is what muskan reiterates that uh, uh, again people ask that you know government uh, keeps on bringing such initiatives um, uh, all the time so uh, uh, so what uh, so what are we uh, what are we getting new here so but then eventually they were able to convince them uh, i have a lot of questions but i really don't have time i'm sorry uh, but we are we are sure that we will uh, reach out uh, to the agcs with your questions and would get back to you through email or whatever email you have registered with proper answers to whatever you have asked Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Muskan. Thank you, uh, Rupa. And thank you, Valka. Uh, uh, inspiration hum sab ke liye. And please keep on doing. Jo kar rahe ho, wo karte thank you so much. Uh, now, uh, moving on to the rest of the webinar. Uh, this was a very interesting session for me. And I think it is truly wonderful here. Wonderful to hear from our champions, being able to share their experience and listen to their stories. And now uh, this brings to me, uh, brings, uh, brings us to our next speaker, uh, Mr. Anand Sinha, who is the country advisor for David and Lissile Packard Foundation in India. Uh, Anand Sinha has over 28 years of experience in public health, primarily related to reproductive, maternal, child health in India. And he's a strong advocate and thought leader on adolescent issues in India. Anand will talk about uh, foundation's priorities in adolescent space and further about the possibility of using peer uh, or champion-led approaches to address health and wellness needs of unreached adolescents. Uh, over to you, Anand. Thank you so much. Um, 
Luigi was saying that it's a hard act to follow when Dr. Kera has spoken. It's an impossible thing to follow after you've heard Alka, Rupa, and Muskan speak. And frankly, I'm going to bore everyone because the highlight of the show has happened. We can go home. Um, it's very hard to follow. <laughs> Alka, Rupa, Muskan, if we don't have webinar in the webinar, and if we do face to face in a room, then all of the people ऑडियंस में खड़ा होके आपको ताली बजा रहे होंगे क्योंकि आपको सुन के और आपको देख के सबको एक जोश और एक एनर्जी मिल रहा है just to translate i'm telling muskan rupa and alka that if we weren't tied up in this zoom format and if we were in a room we would all be giving them a standing applause right now um that's frankly what they deserve for the work that they do and the way that they have conveyed it um to us this is just so wonderful to hear um thank you so <sighs> I'm going to try and keep my uh, comments short. You know, the Packard Foundation has 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 been committed um, and has been working on issues related to adolescent health for over 20 years in India. Our partnership with Engender Health um, goes back uh, more than a decade, um, working on issues related to adolescent health. It's partially because we think that the issues of adolescence are important. But it's also very much because the issues related with adolescence are some of the hardest issues that one uh, actually encounters in the field of public health. They're one of the issues which is of the lowest priority in the field of public health, primarily because they're a very healthy population. Many people just don't consider them to be of um, high priority. Programming for adolescence health is, diff is difficult. It's not just about providing a product. It's not about immunization. It's not about giving, you know, specific uh, uh, set of services. It's about dealing with a whole person in their in their growth um, trajectory. And, and I think the most important and or the, maybe the most hardest part is that programming with adolescents comes with a lot of backlash and challenges. There's a lot of people who object to people talking to young people, people trying to inform, provide information, provide access to services, trying to sort of change mindsets um, is something that comes with backlash. Listening to these three young ladies, they make it look easy, but it's not. They, this, is, this comes with tremendous, and I know there was a lot of questions in there which were saying, what are the challenges? And I think that's really is very relevant questions because that's often what is, you know, what really holds um, programs back. And I know that's what our part partnership with Engenda Health has really been um, about trying to explore uh, for these last 10 years. Um, what we're trying to do right now with Engender Health through this partnership is really try to figure out how do you help to implement one of the most ambitious yet one of the most complicated programs that the government of India has undertaken, which is the RKSK. It is a very ambitious program. It took a long time to conceive. It was conceived in a most in the most, I think, you know, people always say this, it was a beautifully written document. It's really well uh, written, but when it comes to implementation, we struggled with it. Um, you know, we struggled with it a lot. The government has struggled with it. And I think one of the things that we're trying to figure out is what is the role of NGOs and civil society partners to be able to try and take on certain parts of that program. I think this is one of those amazing innovations, and 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 I'm and I'm you know and again I'm just so grateful and thankful to um, Luigi and to UNICEF for sort of you know partnering on this initiative um, uh, to try out this innovation. Um, but this is one of those in innovations I think where we try and figure out how do you maybe unleash the value of the peer educators? What is the value of the peer educators? How do you try and sort of you know examine that um, and 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 figure out um, what more can be done? And, and this is also because we know from a lot of evidence about peer educators that the whole peer educator approach is a very contested approach. There's a lot of papers, there's a lot of research where people say, you know, peer educators don't, you know, is a good initiative because it helps to change the peer educator's behavior, but does it change the behavior of their peers? Does it affect the community? Um, how much does it have a greater impact? And I think here we're seeing an example again of, you know, of a peer educator sort of initiated model, which seems to have, you know, definite uh, impact uh, at the community level. Um, you know, again, part of what we're discovering here is the fact that, you know, it's not just about young people as recipients and as beneficiaries, and many people have said this before me, but I think just to make, you know, ensure that we're un unlocking the, uh, the value of young people as 
people who inform programs, people who implement programs, people who are the leaders um, in these um, uh, in these programs. Um, you know, it's it is often that communities see peer educators as being extraneous as being an unnecessary part of a you know part of an outreach as and again part of what i was talking about in terms of the backlash you know it is something that often communities don't see value to peer educators i think you're trying to address that really wonderfully here by making them you know by making them very relevant um to the to the communities um you know it's and i guess i'm i'm just i'm going to just conclude here by saying you know it's wonderful to listen to, uh, you know, Alka Rupa and Muskan, and 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 I think just to hear the the fact that you know we see them as agents of change, and really there's a lot of change happening here. Um, you know, what you know, you see them; they come with energy. They're not tired. They're not used. They're not bored of the system. They're not tired of their work. They come with tremendous energy. You know, they come without biases. They're willing to sort of question the social biases, the social structures. They're willing to reach out to the communities, to everyone in their communities and make sure that they reach all of those people um, who they need. They come with a willingness to engage in basics. They're not trying to make it complicated. Just hearing the kinds of issues these girls are talking about when they go to households, it's so nice to see that they're talking about simple issues that have huge impact. But they're not trying to prove that they are, you know, medicalized experts. They're doing the basics, which really, really need to be done, and which can be conveyed so easily by them in the households and in the communities that they reach out to. Um, you know, and and I think probably most importantly is that they come with hope. They're very clearly speaking, you know, about a future and about the role that they can play, and they come with hope. So just to reinforce, you know, what Anna was saying, you know. They're not the future, right? The future is here today. And these people, these young leaders are showing us the change that can happen today once we begin to invest in them. It's not an investment that we have to wait for a long time to see um, emerge. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anand. Thank you. That was great. And uh, uh, what you just said uh, about unleashing the value of a peer educator and how it is important to engage these uh, young, uh, energetic uh, people, not as beneficiaries uh, or passive participants, but as active change agents in the, their own health and uh, the health of their own community, basically. So, um, and also, uh, uh, I mean, uh, just to let everybody in this webinar know that uh, we are being joined by many of our peer educators from Sita Marie. I really don't have a number because it's a live thing, but we will definitely get back to your 20. 20 peer educators have joined, boys, girls, both, and they're so excited uh, to hear their friends talking and uh, and I think uh, with all the technical glitches that they were, uh, you know, they have because they're not tech savvy as such. So, but they're still being able to join. Thank you for all the peer educators. Joby peer educators ne joined kiya. Thank you so much. Aur unke parents ne bhi shayad kisi ne join kiya. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, so I see a lot of very interesting questions in our chat box and I will request speakers to answer these uh, within the Q&A area and I request others, all the uh, all our participants to please keep on posing questions. And I now invite Dr. Sunita Singhal, our Deputy Country Rep and Technical Director to lead this session. A result-oriented design thinker, Dr. Singhal, has successfully provided strategic leadership and technical guidance to engender health, adolescent health, and FP programs in line with you know whatever emerging scientific evidence uh, comes. So over to you, Sunita, ma'am, uh, for this very interesting, engaging QA session. Yeah. So there have been very, very interesting questions in the chat box as well as uh, in the um, Q and A uh, section. Some of the questions have been answered by the educators peer educators themselves, but uh, I'll just take up these two questions, which are about AGCs, these girls, that can any one of the AGCs share the, her motivation to join this initiative? And what is the level of support these peer AGs are getting from their parents and communities in general? And the most challenging behavior that they have faced, I think this part, a couple of them have already answered. Now regarding the first two questions, uh, I think uh, we in 
can make the girls answer but let me answer from my end the peer educators are a part of in gender health rksk arsh program in the C district sitamani uh, we have done an intensive work on the ground actually we mapped the villages we identified the peers we engaged with their parents and the local leaders and that is how these peer peer educators were actually allowed to come in and join the program so we have picked up these pe's who were already working there and so uh, my assumption is that they did, really did not face a lot of problems in going after this agcs this new messages which they were supposed to spread in the um, community so partially uh, they were already motivated and the permission from the parent and the local leaders was there but rest of course we did face some challenges some of them because not 100% all of them were actually able to join in so having said that now uh, let me go ahead with the second question which is about you know how will in gender health ensure the sustainability of the project impact with the agc this is a very very interesting question and i think i will put it back on the audience that how will you take this initiative the learnings that we've all shared with you all how will you take it forward so having said that let me just share here that we have taken a feedback from all of these girls whom we oriented to the newborn care messages and almost almost all of them have shared that they are ready and willing in fact more than willing that they will continue to spread these newborn care messages at any platform any opportunity throughout their life that is about from these girls but the other point is that we also hope that all the participants to their programs will utilize every opportunity and platform and nudge this very small learning and help spread the messages and use the potential the energy the immense energy that we've seen in these girls and take over and spread forward not just this newborn care messages but any other health messages or any other societal norm we want to change or we want to impact so that's um, is my, our answer from our end and uh any other question please you can raise your hand and we can answer back and to my answer here maybe i can ask uh, dr khera to add something if you want to add dr khera particularly regarding this question of taking forward or maintaining the learning that we have from this small pilot thank you very much i think sunita the the point you know which is being talked about is the point of sustainability and that point must be kept in mind and to my understanding this concept of peer educator which is already an integral part of the rksk program but we have to use this program more strategically instead of you know spreading thin the, the whole population level what we can do is we can identify small pockets of unreached population and in those populations which are unreached marginalized who are not going to the regular schools you know one can think of identifying adolescent girl champions i think if we make it more strategic the program will become more cost effective and impact will be high and i think this is then this will be called as the sustainable initiative which can take the agenda of adolescent programming forward i think thank you very much i think this is a really interesting question and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity sunita thank you dr khera so if there are no more questions uh, i think you can continue posting your questions we can take them over respond to you in emails and i think uh, priyanka we can now hand over the thank forum to yeah. dr zoya yeah yes so uh, thank you ma'am and please uh, i see your questions coming in please keep on posting your questions uh, we would respond to you by uh, via email uh, when uh, we'll be writing to you uh, uh, after the webinar 
Uh, then moving on to the next session, uh, I think none of our discussions in this adolescent health space in India would be any useful if it doesn't reach or influence our next speaker. I would now, now like to uh, take the opportunity to invite our very own Dr. Zoya Ali Rizvi for her concluding remarks and thoughts on this topic. So at presently, Dr. Zoya serves as Deputy Commissioner in the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, and heads the Rashtriya Kishore Swasthya Karikram, or the National Adolescent Health Program in India. Dr. Zoya is also managing the newly launched School Health and Wellness Program under Aishman Bharat to improve the health-seeking behavior and knowledge of our school-going children and young people. Uh, over to you, Dr. Zoya. Hi, good evening, Priyanka. I cannot uh, switch my video on. So, ma'am, we're just helping you out. Yeah. Maybe Dr. Zoya can speak, I think, you know? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll speak nevertheless, even you if it see. comes on. We can on. see you, ma'am. Okay, you can see me. Great. Uh, good evening, everybody. I have the, I think, the uh, difficult task of actually uh, giving concluding remarks for some, such an interesting session, beginning with uh, Dr. Kheda, who gave us such a nice brief um, input about this uh, 1,005 adolescent girl champions who have developed the confidence, who have the knowledge to bring about behavior change in uh, new mothers. That's a very, uh, very difficult task and very sensitive task, yet they have managed to achieve that. Uh, big congratulations to Engender and the support you have got from UNICEF and PAGAR for this. It's, it's a very good step and I'm so happy to be here to listen to the three wonderful girl champions who spoke so well, Alka, Rupa and Muskan. Uh, a big, uh, big cheer for you and uh, you, I'm so happy for you all. So from Dr. Khera, if you go to Luigi, Luigi spoke, spoke so well about the right to life, the right to health, the right to participate and to socialize as the girls on, which is a wonderful thought which you put across. Then we had Anna who said uh, that the adolescent health is something which is for now, which I totally agree with her. You have to look at adolescents being the future, not just the future, but the present as well. This is a wonderful point and I totally agree. And of course, then we come to those wonderful girls and Anand. Anand is has set a beautiful background for me. I don't have to speak about my program at all because you give a very uh, good background and has also gone ahead and shared the challenges with we as a policymakers face with the states, with the funders, with our partners and with the NGOs. So that having said, I would like to uh, again congratulate Engender on having this great project in Bihar in a very difficult state and having to deliver so well. But only I think it's a few take home points for me from the government would be actually that it's, it is an intervention which has gone ahead and shown that the girls, the adolescent girls can be empowered to make the right decision if they're given the right information. And this decision can help them negotiate life. And this life and this negotiation can help them decide to make decisions about whether they want to work, whether they want to study, whether they want to uh, increase their skills, what kind of life choices they have, what is the kind of access to services they can get, whether they want to keep studying. So that options and that is the kind of empowerment which this adolescent health program really envisions. It envisions that every adolescent boy and girl has the, has the information and is given the power to decide their life themselves. So that is the first very basic thing which this I think this project has really done. These girls have gone ahead and made changes within their society. That is a big thing. The second part of this project, which I'm really happy to say, is that it, it fulfills a lot of little, little dots and little squares which you build for any intervention. And that is that it works in partnership with the existing program. So we already have Asha who is working in the community with these pregnant mothers, with these new mothers. So that partnership is that partnership of Asha with the new mother is already there. And these girls work with the Asha. And the Asha, we heard her speak. She was so happy to have these young girls support her. So this is a program which is going to already supplement what is there. So it is already built on uh, current structure. Second, it is something which is really, uh, it is thinking out of the box, which so many times we fail in the government. So we look forward to partners and NGOs who are working in the field to give us this input that look, this is something which has worked by partnering with this, by thinking out of the box. So second is, it is thinking out of the box. Third is that it is a very innovative, a very innovative approach for accessing, for empowering girls that 
Fourth, I would say it is a really scalable model, like Dr. Kheda mentioned, that sustainability is a big thing. So any small intervention like this, if it does well, even in a couple of blocks, it can be scaled across the district. So any model which is scalable always is very interest, is of great interest to us. And I would request the state to look it up because this is one intervention for increasing uh, the girl's survival, but similar interventions can be done for so many other health issues which Bihar is facing. Similarly, other states are also facing. So this kind of intervention, this kind of out of, out of the box, thinking innovation which is scalable and it is not really expensive so all these little tick marks which you do in the public health program have been covered here so so congratulations a big congratulations for engender for doing that and also finally i would like to say that if our adolescent boys and girls have the knowledge and that knowledge they share within their family within the community i don't see any reason why our community our villages our cities our whole nation does not make healthy choices so with that having said, and I'm, I'm uh, again congratulating Engender and their support for uh, having this wonderful intervention and uh, informing the government also about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Zoya ma'am. Uh, 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 very, uh, we have duly noted your points and you rightly talked about, you know, um, giving these adolescents, young people, right knowledge to uh, negotiate life and then talking about partnership with the existing structures. And I'm so happy that you thought uh, that this is like a innovative, scalable model. And this is something that we also think uh, that, you know, uh, today we have done this with newborn care. And I think this uh, approach has a huge potential to address many, many health issues that we all have been grappling for years in our health sector. Thank you, Zoya ma'am. And I think your insights will continue to instill passion in our work and guide us to do this good work. And it gives us even more, more confidence. So um, uh, it's 547 and uh, this brings us to the end of this webinar. A uh, big thank you to all the speakers and the participants for uh, actively asking questions and all of you have enriched this dialogue which shall continue, I promise. This does not stop here. A big thank you uh, to UNICEF India team, Luigi, and the Packet Foundation, uh, Anand, due to which organizations like us are able to take these small steps. And thank you, Dr. Zoya, for sparing your precious time and giving us this great guidance. And uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Kheda, Anna, and Sunita, ma'am, for your amazing leadership and, you know, and, and guidance uh, on, on this. And a big shout out to all my champions out there and my team on the ground, Mini, Sudarshan, Manish, Vijay, uh, you are amazing and uh, because of which uh, Engender Health is able to uh, do this kind of show this kind of work and uh, thank you uh, 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 to my new concepts team uh, thank you Surki you have been wonderful uh, in this project and uh, to all of you there um, uh, if you have any further questions please do send us at info at the rate engenderhealth.org and uh, we will forward it to the speakers to whom the question is addressed. We will put up these presentations and this video of the webinar uh, on Engender Health website, which uh, Surki will be sharing. The link she's going to share on the chat box right now, and we'll inform you via email. Thank you, one uh, panelist, for such a such a valuable time, and we, it's, it was a pleasure to have you all. Thank you so much.